Hello, I'm Hugh Hancock. I'm the developer of Left Hand Path, which is a reasonably popular virtual reality game you may have heard of. It's, I believe, the longest, largest uh, single player narrative experience uh, available dedicated to VR right now. Um, and as a result of having developed that, I um, have a number of perspectives on virtual reality, which various people have asked me to make videos about and talk about this stuff and uh, rant about things that I think are important to this uh, exciting new medium um, that we are all um, experiencing and occasionally running into walls in. So I'm going to do a series of these. Um, don't know how many, depends on how popular they are, depends on whether people say that was great, please do another one, or oh god, oh god, please no. Um, this first video is going to be talking about the concept of the empathy machine in VR. Um, you may or may not have heard of this. Uh, whenever there is a piece about VR, particularly in the more sort of liberal fluffy press, or whenever there is a panel on VR, people tend to bring up the idea that virtual reality is incredibly powerful because it is an empathy machine, because it, it almost forces you to have empathy for other people by putting you in their shoes. And the most famous example of this is the Syrian refugee experience, which came out on Steam a little while ago, and was essentially a video piece putting you in the perspective of a Syrian refugee as they dealt with the many challenges involved in fleeing their country and starting a new life. A lot of people said this was very powerful. Um, I haven't actually experienced it personally, but I have no doubt that it was. Um, but it was one of the things that really popularised this empathy machine concept. Another example was a app a little while ago, um, back in the Oculus DK1, DK2 days, um, that was meant to be used by two people, one man, one woman, and essentially swapped their viewpoints so that you could kind of get the experience of being in someone else's body. And people reported this was a very powerful experience. And once again, made them sort of feel increased empathy, increased understanding um, of another person. Now, in Left Hand Path, uh, quite apart from scaring the crap out of people and um, calling them to die an awful lot, uh, heavy Dark Souls influence on the game, um, I spend quite a lot of time messing around with the identity, the concepts of identity, the concept of what it means to be a person. And so I, I have some thoughts on this empathy machine thing. And one of the big things that I um, think about it is that it's wrong. Why? An empathy machine, something that caused you to feel empathy for another person, would have to project emotions onto you. And VR doesn't do that. What VR is, is an experience machine. Experiences produce emotions. Those emotions can sometimes produce increased empathy for another person, if you have had the same experience as they had, which you previously hadn't, and this causes you to have a new perspective. But it is very, very dangerous if you are trying to achieve the kind of things you are probably trying to achieve, if you want to cause people to have empathy, to assume that shared, that shared experiences will cause shared empathy. Why is that? Well, let me give you an example. So the one of the classic examples would be someone who was rich, um, who had very strong opinions on the poor and how they should work their way up by their bootstraps, and uh, then they became poor, and because of this experience and seeing the world from the other side, they completely changed their minds and become a very strong proponent of the welfare state or whatever. I'm not getting into politics in this video. Um, this is purely an example. Well, that works sometimes, but there are quite a number of counterexamples where someone has had very strong, stereotypically right-wing views um, on welfare, on how the poor should act on the fact that on the poor should just, you know, work their way up to their bootstraps or work terribly hard and enjoy the success of their labours and all this sort of thing. Then they became very poor, and then they did exactly what they preached. They worked their way out through their bit, by their bootstraps. They didn't ask for help from anyone. They became as rich or richer as they were before, and their viewpoint becomes increasingly strengthened. And this is the big, the big trap if you assume that giving someone experiences will necessarily produce the classic empathy. Um, if you want to look at what an experience machine can do, you can really look at computer gaming. Um, because computer games are experience generators as well, or they can be used that way. And there's been an increasing um, vein of computer games which 
are trying to... There's been an increasing vein of computer games which are presenting people with unpleasant circumstances um, as experienced by a lot of people around the world. A classic example would be Papers, Please, where you play a border guard in a fictional Eastern European communist country and you're trying to decide who gets in, who doesn't, and you're making decisions about people who are claiming to be refugees or are refugees, and there are real consequences to your character's family on the line if you get this stuff wrong, and it's a pretty harrowing game. I've actually not played it, I watched my girlfriend play it for about two hours, and then at two point phrase I noped the fuck out of there, because it was just too damn depressing for me. But it was a very, very powerful experience. Another one is This War of Mine, um, which Place the character, the place the player as a character who is a civilian in a war torn city doing increasingly horrible things to survive. And both of these are great games that give people alternate perspectives on people who are having experiences probably much shitter than the player has had. So they're great for giving people experiences and eye opening their eyes as to what it's really like. What they don't do is guarantee that someone will have empathy for the protagonist, or that they will react in the way you want them to react. So if you are doing the kind of thing where you are thinking, right, we're going to use VR as an empathy generator, there's a couple of things you need to do. And the bouncing is because I'm sitting on a yoga ball, by the way. Um, there's a couple of things you need to do. First thing you need to do is when you made the lovely thing, test it on a wide variety of people outside the echo chamber that you are currently in. There is no point in creating something that you are intending to change hearts and minds and then only showing it to, to, to the people whose hearts and minds are already changed, because they are likely to react in the way you want them to react. You want to somehow get some people who do not agree with you and put them in this thing and then see how they react. Because people can react in a massively wide variety of different ways. To take the rich, to take the, um, rich person who becomes poor, for example, they can react by going, oh my word, this is crushing and overwhelming, holy shit, I was wrong. I need to, to support the welfare state. They can react by going, actually, this is a really interesting challenge, right? Let me get down to it and work 100 hours a week or whatever. And uh, wow, now I'm doing even better than I was before. Some people would actually report it was refreshing to lose all their belongings. You know, if you think that's crazy, then look at the number of stories of hermits or um, people in various um, meditative disciplines who have found that they found that became very freed by losing all their belongings. This is a fairly common, fairly common thing. Um, I'm not planning to test it personally, I've got to say, but people do react that way. People are going to react unexpectedly to experiences, and all you can do is present the experiences. You've also got to check that you actually presented the experiences accurately. There's two big dangers here. The first one is that you present them in a slanted way because you really want someone to experience a certain set of emotions, so you just amp up and amp up and amp up. And that has two problems. One is that it's too, if it's too unpleasant, people will just note the fuck out of there again. And the second one is that people are sensitive to editorial bias. So people will just go, ah, no, this is unrealistic. You guys are, you guys are making this stuff up. VR does not remove people's um, critical faculties. Um, the second danger is that you make it too easy because you want people to stay in. And then they come out of there going, well, I've been a Syrian refugee. doesn't look that hard. I could probably do it. That is not a great outcome. So once you've, tested, once you've tested this thing, what's the second thing you have to do? The second thing you have to do is you have to be open to the fact that, as I say, you're creating an experience generator. People are going to react to this in different ways. So it's a great way to start, to, I hate this phrase, but start a dialogue, blah, blah, blah. It is a great way to get people thinking about the issue in a new way. Um, it's a great way to have them have the experiences that the people you are hoping they will have empathy for have had but you can't control what they're going to do with that. And they may have all sorts of unexpected responses. So it's worth coming into that with a really open mind. It is worth coming into that with a really, okay, well, we're going to learn some stuff about how people react to this situation. Um, and also we're going to need to talk afterwards. You know, it's not a, a one-stop shop, but it should get people talking at least, which is a very powerful thing. I also think that in many ways, uh, an experience generator is more powerful than an empathy generator because rather than just giving well just giving people compassion compassion is a very important thing and there's a lot we could do a lot more of it in the world but this also gives you the ability to drop people into experiences that no one has ever had this gives you the ability to broaden people's minds to an enormous extent people always say that travel 
is one of the biggest things to, that broadens people's minds. And certainly there appears to be a strong correlation between increased travel incre and increased tolerance, increased compassion, all this kind of thing. And VR is essentially the most powerful travel tool that's ever been created. You can go anywhere, you can do anything. These things are going to broaden people's perspectives. These things are going to, I would tend to say, promote more compassion and more empathy on average and more interesting viewpoints and more understanding of the world. Um, so bear all that in mind. Bear that in mind that there is more that you can do than just making someone feel sorry for someone else. It's an incredibly powerful tool. And we're really only just starting to scratch the surface of what we can do in the circumstance where we can literally create worlds. And I'm finding that absolutely amazing. It is why I abandoned a 20 year career as a filmmaker to become a virtual reality developer, because as far as, as far as I'm concerned, it's just better in every single way. And I'm looking forward to seeing what people do with it in the future. I guarantee there's a load of stuff we just haven't thought of that is going to turn out to be super powerful. That's it. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you did enjoy it, please do share it, comment it, like it. It will probably be on Facebook and YouTube so that more people can hear about this stuff.